So we're going to look at nets of three-dimensional objects. Um, I found a very kind of neat interactive tool online that we'll look at first, and then we'll go through the summary. So uh, I'll post this link as well in the video description and the course. So if you click the video description or the, the link, it takes you to this little interactive tool with a bunch of different objects. We're only going to be looking at a few for Math 8. Um, the first one is the net of a square prism. This one's fairly straightforward. Uh, as you can see, the net is there. And what you can do is you can change the pattern, you can change the view. But what I really want to look at is what happens when we close this. So as we start to close this, what do all the pieces do as we fold them in? Where does each section go to make the cube? So if we unfold it, you'll see that this section over here, this dark gray, ends up becoming the top of the cube. And this section here stays the bottom. These, all these sides, uh, the blue, purple, green, and orange, fold in to be the sides of the cube. So you're, you're just going to have to, in this section, you're recognizing what the nets look like, what the net is going to form, what kind of shape it's going to make. And you might actually be asked to draw nets of certain objects. So we're just going to go through and visualize. Hopefully this will help you visualize. So that's the net of a cube. Uh, the next one I want to look at is the net of a rectangular prism. So this one, we can actually change the size of it. We can change the dimensions of each section of the rectangle. Um, kind of neat. You can even rotate it to change the view of it. And then you can unfold or fold it. So rectangular prisms are very similar to cubes, only the sides, of course, are different dimensions. So we have these rectangles here. We have a bottom part that looks like uh, a bit of a bigger rectangle. Um, and the top, of course, is going to have to be the same because it has to fold over. So again, as I fold the net up, you'll see that it creates a box, right? Again, very similar to the square, um, but it's just a nice way to visualize what happens to each piece, right? Again, this part over here folds to the top, so it must be the same dimension as the bottom. Otherwise, it would be a very wonky looking box, so it, it wouldn't work. So yeah, rectangular prism, square prism. We're not going to look at hexagonal prisms. Uh, triangular prisms, we're not going to look at for this course, although they're, they're, they're not that bad. So this one just kind of folds out. It's just the top. And the bottom, you'll notice, will be triangles instead of rectangles or squares. But the rest are all rectang probably rectangles to fold in for the sides, right? To make a triangular prism. A prism is just like a box. And whether you say triangle or rectangle just kind of represents what the base of that box will be. Whether it's a rectangle or a square. A cube is actually a tight, you could say a cube is a square prism. Cylinder is the third one I'm going to look at. So as you can see, this is already kind of unfolding as it goes. Some of them autoplay. And as it folds up, you'll see that the top and bottom circle close and close. It's kind of a neat, neat tool. Um, so as it unfolds, though, you'll notice that this cylinder in the middle, what's called, and what we, when we do surface area, we find lateral surface area, what's called lateral around the outside. As it unfolds, though, notice we basically this cuts it down the center and we fold it out to create a very long rectangle. Okay, so that cylind cylindrical part in the center folds in to become a cylinder and the top and the bottom close it off. But that middle section ends up actually being a rectangle. And this will come into play when we start looking at the surface area of these objects, um, that you're really just gonna be finding the surface area of this rectangle. But because it's a circle, we have to figure out what all of this area or this distance is around the top or around the edge, which ends up being the circumference of that circle. The circumference of this circle inside here, you might have heard that word before, ends up becoming the length of this rectangle. And the height of the rectangle is, of course, the height of the cylinder. So that will come into play when we find surface area of a cylinder. But note, that's what it would look like, right? This whole part folds in, that rectangle folds in together to make a circle. And then those top circles will fold on bottom and top to create the full cylinder. Okay, there's two more I want to look at. This uh, this one here, a square-based pyramid. You might have seen the pyramids in Egypt or something like that, and they're kind of shaped like this, um, a little bigger. 
So this interactive tool, we can again change the size of everything, change the height of the rectangle or the triangles. I mean, these are triangles. And as you'll note, you probably see already that these edges are all going to fold in as I go, fold up, up to create your pyramid. And of course, square based pyramid, you can have a rectangular based pyramid. You could have, well, actually, maybe not. Let's just, for this course, we're just looking at square based pyramids. So the square base pyramid works because then all of these sides will fold uh, to make to meet up at the single point. If you had a rectangular, that actually wouldn't work because the sides wouldn't fold up. You'd have gaps. So it has to be a square based pyramid. So the Egyptians knew, knew what they were doing when they made pyramids. So that's what the net looks like. Um, and the sides all look like triangles. And each triangle, of course, will have a, this L represents the height of the triangle, the length of the triangle. So this will come into play when we're finding surface area. And the last one I want to look at in this course is the cone, the cone. So we have a circular cone, cones have a circle and they have this kind of rounded portion on the bottom or the top, um, that come to a point. So again, with this interactive tool, we can change the radius, which is going to change the size of the circle. And then we can also change the height of the, uh, triangular portion of this cone. So if I do this again, we can press the play to make it go automatic, or I can just kind of flip the top open and then cut that down the center. And this one ends up being quite strange, right? It's like half a circle, sort of. So we cut that down the center and it becomes half a circle that we will then, well, almost half a circle, a bit of a slant, uh, but that's what the net will look like of a cone. So this bottom portion, we kind of fold together to make that part. And then the top will fold down to make the um, top of the cone, the, cir the circular part. And notice that the radius, of course, is the radius of the circle. And the H is the height of the triangular part of the whole cone. So, and then we also have slant height, which will come into play for finding surface area. So just to go back, um, that was the interactive activity. So a summary of the 3D nets, we have a cube, the net of a cube. I even show how many faces, edges, and vertices it has. Vertices, of course, are the points on the cube, all the different points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Edges are how many, of course, uh, flat edges you would see, or the, just the kind of vertical or horizontal lines and faces of course, are the, the entire face, like the, how many shapes are there on the entire thing? Kind of think of a cube as a dice, right? Then we have the net of a rectangular prism, the net of a square based pyramid or pyramid cylinder and cone. So hopefully this little chart will help you kind of visualize how these nets work. And that tool that we just looked at will show how they, how all of these shapes fold together.